Hi there and welcome to lesson two of the AI and Ethics module. My name's Mr. Simpson and today we're looking at how AI learns. Really, it's just trial and error. This computer program that um, we talked about in the last lesson that can learn, that can um, sort of predict uh, things based on new data, it uses trial and error in order to build its model of the world. So imagine you're trying to get better at playing some sort of video game, but every time you play, of course you're going to notice what works and what doesn't. And you know if you can't make progress in the game, or if you die at a certain point in the game, or you lose some lives, or your your treasure gets stolen, or whatever. Every time you play, you're going to get better and better because you'll predict that these things are going to happen, and you'll come up with new strategies to avoid falling into the same trap. Okay, so the more you play, the better you're going to get. Uh, AI systems learn in a very similar way, but instead of continually sort of playing the game over a long period of time, they would use lots and lots of data so that they can learn faster. And what I've done here is I've um, come up with sort of four stages. Now they're not they're not the the official stages, but there's four stages the AI system uses in order to learn. Okay, and the first one is learning from examples. So um, if you wanted uh, an artificial intelligence system to recognize pictures of cats, all you got to do is get thousands and thousands of pictures of cats and label them as cats, and then thousands and thousands of pictures of other things and label them as not cats. Okay, And then you feed it into the system and it will analyze all these pictures and it'll go, okay, that's a cat, that's a cat, that's not a cat, that's a cat, that's not a cat. And the AI will start to notice similar similarities and patterns in those images. So for example, cats should have fur, cats should have whiskers, cats should have pointy ears and all these things. And it builds up its model of what a cat is by looking at cats and looking at things that are not cats. Okay, so it learns from examples in stage one. But in stage two, you then allow it to train itself. and it starts to make guesses about what it's seeing. And to begin with, it's going to make a lot of mistakes. So it's going to think that everything's a cat. So a pen is a cat, you know, a jar is a cat, a coffee cup is a cat. And it's going to make these mistakes. But the important thing is that when it makes the mistakes, the system, or if there's a human operator involved, they give feedback and they say, no, that's not a cat and continually reinforce this until it works out what the right answer is. Okay, so every time you give it feedback and say no, it adjusts its model so that next time it sees the same image or the, 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 the jar or the coffee cup, it goes, it's not a cat. And then again, the feedback that time will be, that's correct, it's not a cat. And so as um, the feedback continues over time, the AI gets better and better and its model is more refined and better trained. Okay, And this improves the accuracy of any decisions that it makes in the future. And you know, like anyone, once you've started training and you're getting quite good at identifying cats and not cats, um, then you don't stop. You continue to train because there's always new information coming in. Um, if you imagine your uh, Spotify playlist or your Netflix um, viewing history, okay, that doesn't stay static. You will continually watch new things. You'll continually listen to different types of music, hopefully. And as you do that, the model that the AI system is using to recommend something else to you continues to be refined and improve. Okay, so the continually training, even though you've got a good model, you continually train it with new data that comes in over time into the future, the AI will continue to get better and better. And that's why you're seeing much better responses to things like ChatGPT questions now, because the model's continually evolving and it's taking in new data and it's using the feedback. I don't know if you ever see the little thumbs up and thumbs down um, feedback buttons when you're using these chatbots. It's getting better because people are giving it feedback, okay? So the idea is you continue training. So this is really stage two again, uh, and you repeatedly do this until it can take a picture of a cat that's never seen before in training, and it can say with certainty, that's a cat. That's when you know that it's a fantastically trained model. 
And then you've got to use it. I mean, there's no point in training up this uh, AI system without actually turning it into something that you can use. And uh, the example pictures there are from my Google Photos. So it is learning um, of the different objects that are in my photographs over time. So I've got maybe about 15,000 photos, maybe more than that actually now, in my Google Photos. And it's been using these and analyzing the different uh, elements of this to actually work out who I am, who my dog is, and who my cat is. Um, and that's a really powerful use of um, this AI model because if I want to find all the photos of my dog, I just have to click on the picture of my dog and it will pull up all the photos going back over numbers of years. Um, and it does this in Google Photos to help users identify images of friends or family or pets. And it gets it wrong sometimes, but that's what the feedback's for. And then you improve the efficiency of searches. So if I want to search for um, pictures of cats in my Photos feed, I could type in cat and it will use the photos of Rosie to identify any photos of cats in my photo albums. So there's the four stages. But it's not just photo, it was not just sort of photographs of real things. If you think about it, we can see, we tend to see faces and everything. And if you look at the photo there, I mean, hopefully you might recognize that as a cat. So it looks like a cat's kind of swiping at the sky, trying to get a bird out of the sky. But computers can be trained to do this as well with a little bit of practice. But pictures um, aren't really analyzed in the same way by a computer system as the way that we look at it. So we take it as a whole. Um, a computer system breaks it down into its component parts, which are small pixels, which are single dots of color um, in a overall image. And the AI will look at how these dots are arranged in their patterns um, in pictures of cats against pictures of not cats. And then over time, again, it starts to recognize those certain shapes. So it could be this triangle shape of the ear, or it could be the curve of the body, or it could be the, the sort of kink of the tail. And it will use that to predict that these are pictures of cats. Okay, so that's pattern recognition, another cornerstone of computational thinking. There are downsides, of course, um, because AI is just a tool. It's just a computer program that's been developed to excel at very specific narrow tasks. But there's limitations you need to think about, especially when you're thinking about using artificial intelligence. AI, firstly, only learns from the data it's given. Now, this can bring in all sorts of problems that you're going to learn about in the next lesson. But because it's only learning from the data it's provided, it can't think creatively. It can't go beyond that data set. And it really struggles to understand any sort of context beyond any patterns that it's recognized already and trained into that model. AI also doesn't have common sense. Um, I remember something uh, a while back. I remember walking along a street in Stonehaven and uh, I saw a pound coin on the ground and I thought, this is my lucky day. And I bent to pick up the pound coin and realized that someone had glued it to the pavement. And when I looked across the road, there were three men standing outside of a pub laughing their heads off. And apparently this had been going on for about two or three hours. People had wandered along, saw the pound coin on the ground, bent down and picked it up. And the common sense approach to that is just go, okay, it's a joke. They've glued it to the ground. I can't pick it up and then continue on your way. An AI or a robot that in, in, invokes AI to do this might continually try and pick up that pound coin for the rest of its sort of natural or unnatural life. Um, so an AI can't really apply common sense into situations. It doesn't have any emotions. Um, so it doesn't understand a joke. It doesn't understand when its response makes someone uh, angry or upset. And it lacks that ability to make judgments like humans do every day. So think about that as a limitation of AI. So the advice it gives you, if it tells you something, it's doing so without emotion or without any sort of empathy. Uh, it's, it's probably because it doesn't fully understand the entire context around questions uh, as well. The last limitation to be aware of is that it struggles with tasks that require an understanding of deeper meaning um, or 
that requires like leaps of intuition or far, you know, brand new situations that it hasn't encountered before. So here's an example, a robot might be fantastic at hoovering up um, crumbs on a floor in a hotel, and that might continue for years without any problems. But then suddenly one day there is a volcano eruption near that hotel, lava flows into the hotel um, and crosses over the corridor. Is that robot going to be able to identify that the lava is not part of the floor? Or will it try and hoover the lava? I am 99.9% .9 sure that it will just blindly trundle off into the hot lava and disintegrate before it realizes that there's anything wrong with the floor that it thought was there. Okay, so that's some limitations of AI that you've got to be aware of. So in summary, there's huge benefits to AI, but it lacks that understanding and adaptability of human intelligence. And that's why we don't currently have general AI or AGI. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Um, today's or this lesson's practical task is on training an image recognition system. We're gonna be using something called Teachable Machine and I've already provided you with a set of cat photos and dog photos and some things to test out against the, the, the training data. When you've built that model, you can upload those images, you can test them out and hopefully you'll see that it doesn't always get it right. But it's all about context and it's all about the training data that you've provided. OK, thank you so much for your attention. And uh, remember, if you've got any feedback or questions, please add it to the box that's coming up in just a few seconds. Bye for now.